So the eclipse season is behind us. Mercury has stationed direct. We're going into a whole new cycle. What can we expect? What's next? Welcome, beautiful soul, to this energy update for May 2024. I'm going to be looking at a little bit of the astrology of May 2024. Um, I'm going to share a couple of spirit animal messages that are coming forward, a new piece of art that has a whole lot of symbolism that pertains to this month, as well as I'll pull a card, a blessing card, to help us through this month. And let's start with the astrology. As I said, we've just come out of this incredible cycle of lots and lots of Aries energy and lots of new beginnings. It feels like there's a, a, a whole new um, cycle that we're really heading into after this the, the great eclipse that, that just happened in, in April. Um, now we're moving into, into starting in May. We're in an Earth sign, Taurus, and it's going to be shifting into Gemini. So Earth and Air, a whole different energy that we're you know, welcoming in. And I feel like what it's going to do is help to take all this kind of tremendous um, kind of initiation that we've had and start bringing it into earth and then start bringing it into where we can actually work with it. Okay, so um, if you had any kind of a personal um, transformations or initiations or downloads during the eclipse season, now is when we can actually start digging in and start shaping our world, right, um, in, in, in order to bring about a change that's needed, right, in the world. Okay, so a couple of events happening in May. Um, Pluto is going retrograde in the sign of Aquarius on May 2nd. It's been going in and out of Capricorn to Aquarius, um, and it's going to go back into Capricorn uh, later in this year and before it settles full-time into Aquarius for probably about 20 years. So this is a, a major shift. Pluto is this <laughs> planet that has a lot to do with kind of craziness. It's think of it as like the tower card in, in, um, in tarot. Uh, Pluto can have uh, associations with kind of destruction, but also in terms of things that have to be torn down in order to make way or new. And when we look at one of this month's spirit animals, that has a lot to do with it too. Um, going retrograde really means that we're looking inwards, looking within ourselves. Okay, so a lot of what may, may initiate is some kind of inner witnessing or inner um, awareness. This is a really good month to start really getting into observer mode with yourself. Start just being curious and without trying to change anything initially, right? Just start watching yourself, watching your reactions, watching your emotions and, and the way that you act and react. Um, you can learn a lot that way and that is something that um, can be really, really helpful when we're going into a new cycle. It, it'll bring to light things that, well, maybe this is what I need to work on right now. Um, or maybe these are some strengths here that I, that I need to capitalize on. Okay, um, on May 20th, the sun goes into Gemini. So again, uh, the, the beginning part, um, much of the month of May, um, may feel a little more grounded, right? We're going into Earth. Um, shadow side of the grounding, right, is sometimes we get into crystallized patterns. So just watch if you start feeling yourself, um, yeah, and, and again, that comes back down to the, uh, the observer, right? Observe if you have any kind of patterns that, um, you know, need to shift, right? Um, habits that we've gotten into that aren't serving us. Um, May is a good time, especially starting on the second, good time to start those observations so that um, later in May when we hit that Gemini season and bringing the air element in there, um, I would say don't even think, you know, maybe don't even think about um, trying to change a whole lot until we start hitting that Gemini. That is a, a great time to start shifting and changing and breaking up patterns. So first part of the month, just observing, and then second part, um, taking what you've observed and putting that into action. Um, on May 25th, Jupiter enters Gemini. 
and it's going to stay there for about a year. So Jupiter, of course, is this planet of expansion. Gemini is this planet of communication. So the coming year from uh, starting on the 25th of May and a year from there or, or so uh, could be a wonderful time to expand our knowledge and wisdom, right? So if you're thinking about maybe taking a course or something or learning about a particular subject, wonderful year to do that. Um, and also expanding your network, expanding your influence, anything to do with communication or connection, right? Um, so this, this could be a really exciting year ahead, especially if you are building something, building a business or learning new skills. Um, okay, so let's let's move on into the um, the spirit animal messages because when I tuned in and asked my guidance about the energies of May, the first thing they showed me was this butterfly, and it, it was light blue, and this beautiful butterfly. And the message that I got was that the timelines this month are extremely malleable. That means that we can shift timelines or work with them, right? Um, there's, they talked about the butterfly effect, right? Every thought, every action is significant. So let's look at the, the law of cause and effect is really at play here this month. And what that is, uh, the law of cause, cause and effect tells us that every thought that we have is actually happens in the causal field, right? So when we have a thought that initiates a whole chain of, it, it goes out into the universe, right? And, and starts a chain of processes that start this process of manifestation. Okay, so again, beautiful time to really be observant and observe our thoughts as well as our actions and our habits and so forth because it is through those thoughts that we create and we bring into the world. So especially watch for negativity versus the positive thoughts, right? Because it's the law of karma, right? When we start putting negative things out there, it will eventually come back to us. On the other hand, as we start getting more positive and really uh, lifting ourselves into a positive vibration, that's when it starts triggering beautiful things to eventually come back to us. Okay, so that's the butterfly. Now, I was really prompted to uh, create a painting for this month, and this is what it is. But when I first started this, and I'll talk about this in depth because it really says a lot here to us. When I first started it, though, you can still kind of see it, the butterfly shape. That's the first thing that I was drawn to painting. Um, it was a butterfly with the wings, and it was the head right there. Um, but pretty soon, it started like morphing into this, this jaguar being painted. Okay, um, and that's interesting because Jaguar is really, really coming forward for me. And even though that is a personal thing, it came into this thing for the whole month. So I want to go kind of deeply into this, okay, because I feel like this is actually very core to where we are at right now. All right, um, so the Jaguar is a really powerful animal. It has ancient spiritual significance and it encompasses both the powers of life and death and the ability to travel and, and between worlds and to bridge worlds. So it's a very, very shamanic animal. Um, it has always had this powerful association with shamanic power, with the ability to go in between worlds and to shape shift and, and to have this all the psychic and spiritual power. Okay, so um, there are a lot of stories also of weird jaguars, right? So these shape-shifting, um, either shamans who shift into jaguar form or jaguars who shift into human form, okay? And in Aztec mythology, this animal is also connected with a god called Tlaloc. I hope I'm saying that right. Tlaloc is the god of rain and agriculture and so symbolizes this vital life force energy okay so that jaguar has that too all right and so as i was painting this it kept referring me i kept thinking about um or kept being reminded about this saying 
of Yeshua in the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas, right? It's saying number seven. And he says, blessed is the lion which the man eats, and the lion will become man. And cursed is the man whom the lion eats, and the lion will become man. Okay, so in both he's both saying in both ways that the lion's going to become man but there's one way that it because is is done in a sacred way and another way that is done in a kind of a cursed way right so to me this saying is both warning and instruction okay so what i'm seeing is that the lion or in this case the jaguar right because all the big cats are very related um, it symbolizes the bestiality of man, okay? So as embodied beings, as beings here in an animal body, um, we each have within ourselves an inner wild animal, right? That we must both assimilate and transcend. We have to work with it. It is part of us, right? But we also, if we want to be human and evolve as humans and help to evolve and raise the consciousness of ourselves and the planet, because that's what we are, we're the spirit of the earth, we're here to help lift and uplift this entire planet, right? Um, we have to transcend or lift or raise up that animal spirit within us into something that is higher, okay? So when it's done successfully, and that's symbolized by the man consuming the lion, right? Um, then we can partake of the life force of the animal, which gives us the vital energy towards fulfilling our purpose on earth, okay? On the other hand, if we allow that beast nature to take over, then we just become brutes in human form, okay? Um, the, and that's symbolized by the lion consuming the man. And thus the lion becoming the man in a, in, a, in a profane way, okay? And that is something that I feel like right now, especially after this whole eclipse, this is a core energy and a core dilemma that we are all facing here collectively as humans and as individuals, right? Is this, this uh, interplay between our animal nature and our divine nature, right? And um, this is something that played out in Aztec times. Now, as I was researching this and I started to realize, well, this is a jaguar, it's not a lion, it's a jaguar. And I started to see all these, there was this kind of river coming down here and then clouds. And I was like, well, this is like a rain god. And so I looked up, okay, well, is there a jaguar rain god? And that's when I, found out about Tlaloc, the, the rain god of agriculture and so forth. Uh, and as it turns out, and it was interesting because I was getting an image of a snake too, and of course the butterfly had come in right away, and it turns out those are two animals that are also associated with the same god. And so it became very, very clear to me that this is what that was. And um, so as I started researching him, I became actually quite dismayed because even though he was seen as the bringer of rain and this, um, you know, bringer of abundance and life and so forth, he also was associated with some very, very dark practices and including like child sacrifice and, and, and very horrific things in, in ways that it was done. And so um, I, I really was like, oh my gosh, can I even like, do I need to paint over this? Do I need to even burn this or something? Because I don't, I can't reconcile this. And so again, I went to my guides and they really helped me through it, right? What they told me is that, um, is that this is, um, First of all, they told me about the jaguar's power. They said, when properly understood and channeled appropriately, the jaguar's power of death, right? Because it is this, it's known as the animal that can kill with one blow, right? It's got this ruthlessness and also that triggers tremendous fear, okay? But they said the jaguar's power of death will actually serve life that gets channeled appropriately. And they said that at this moment in history, the destructive power is needed for the dismantling of old power in infrastructures. Okay, so they told me, no, don't be afraid of this. 
that I have been turning my power against myself for fear of harming others. And I'm sharing this, even though it's personal, because I feel like uh, it, that's pretty common for empath empaths and light workers to have this fear of, of, of harming others and, and thus not to step into our own power. I feel like it's a really common thing to be afraid of our own power because we sense the and, and the power of it and that also if it's turned in a way that is not in alignment with light right if somehow we get off course it can be immensely destructive um, and so the tendency sometimes is to stay small or to not be heard right not let yourself roar um, that that kind of thing um, they tell me you must not fear to be ruthless and I think in this meeting what they made clear was that by ruthless, they meant like just cut out anything in your life that is not serving your highest light, okay? And um, that can mean uh, attachment to, um, you know, unhealthy relationships, right? Um, they said a quick kill is much more humane than long torturous decline. And sometimes we stay in situations because we don't want to rock the boat. And because we want to stay in good terms with people but if it is going against our own inner nature or our own uh, higher self that wants to express itself then staying in such situations is kind of a long slow <laughs> tortuous you know death actually and um, what they're saying is in a situation like that it could be much better to just like get things out in the open and just cut things off right this is also the sword of Archangel Angel Michael, right? Um, and, and there was a lot of blue in, especially at the beginning of this this painting, um, that that quick, decisive um, ability to cut through things, right? Um, so they say, protect what is yours to protect, uh, destroy that which is not here to serve the highest good. And I feel like they're saying within oneself, right? It doesn't mean that we have to go on a rampage, right? Really not. It's 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 the internal work that it's talking about, um, especially this month with Pluto in retrograde. Um, so then also we've got all this stuff here, this light, the sun, right, which is this symbol of illumination of consciousness and I feel like that is the a number one thing again going into the observer mode and becoming very very conscious of who we are what we're doing and our energies right um, because when we are conscious and bring it into the light then we can actually transmute any dark energies or any energies of violence or whatever and start shifting that okay and so what they are saying is that um, in developing our consciousness and calling on our higher natures, we can harness that power and vitality of the animal self and use it to fuel our, our higher purpose. Okay, when we do, we're going to unleash an alchemical impulse capable of redeeming human suffering and bringing greater light into the world but we've got to be connected with that primal nature if we're not it doesn't actually connect to earth and it doesn't make real change all right so that's why it's so important to connect with that lion within okay um and what there's they told me again is that as light workers, we can shine this month, okay? So we're being invited to express the higher emotions, the higher frequencies through our work and through our creative capacity, right? Whether you make artwork, you do light language, sacred movement, sacred sound, whatever it is, um, paint, dance, sing, write, run and play, create, um, whether it's you're creating a, a business or something like that, or you're fixing up your home whatever these energies are going to um, you can infuse these with high vibrations even at your regular job right whatever it is that you're being called to do you can infuse higher vibrations and light into that your ex you know whatever you do express through it your love for yourself for nature for each other for the world this is 
<laughs> this is being a warrior of light, right? This is using our capacity for, um, you know, our power in ways that are transmuting out of fear and into love, okay? So let us have a celebration of love this month and an affirmation of life. They say darkness can never be in all places at once, and especially we're being invited to call on the angels and because the angelic realm is here and ready to support us in force. Each of us has a team of angels that is only waiting for us to call on them in order to really amplify the power of who we are as we bring light into the world. Okay, so your creative rituals of joy, whatever those are, can help to call in your angelic team and strengthen their presence in the world. The angels have to have us here. We work as a team, right? They're not only helping us, we're helping them. So they are pretty helpless to do a whole lot on the world until we actively call them in. We do that through our, um, you know, joyfulness and following our impulses to express ourselves in, in, in the ways that we're being called to do, okay? So this is a whole different thing than a refusal to see the darkness in the world, right? Because I, I think we're going to see in this month, um, and we're, you know, we've been seeing all along that some of the dark impulses in the world seem to be getting stronger, but I'm sh telling you right now that the light impulses are also strengthening, and this is a call this month to really feel those light impulses and become very observant and aware of not just the darkness, which we need to, you know, kind of stay, stay kind of aware of what's going on there, but also that the forces of light are expanding, that they're strengthening in the world, that there is an impulse towards life, towards light, right? Sometimes that feels fierce. And that's, you know, just be aware of that. So when you are called to action, um, become very, very hyper aware. Hey, here's my kitty. Hyper aware of is this, where's your vibration with that? Maybe you're called to a protest. Become very, very aware of, okay, what's actually behind that? Really look into that, okay? Because if we are celebrating something that, especially I, I'm feeling with this jaguar and this, this Aztec god coming forward, um, you know, if what we're celebrating is connected with um, sacrifice in a dark way, right, especially of children, we want to really rethink our beliefs and we may have to revisit and and actually take a really good hard look at some of the beliefs that we may be holding, especially those that are echoed back and forth in the echo chamber of the internet, right? And amplified in that internet echo, echo chamber. Um, we want to become very observant and start really feeling into our own hearts and the energy of what's going on, the energy of our thoughts, the energy of our beliefs. And if necessary, um, think about, well, you know, that, that we may have to rethink some of those. So what we're talking about here is really stepping into our light um, with our life force, really putting our hearts into what we're doing and creating an affirmation of light in the face of darkness and an alchemical transformation using our own life force to transmute 3D energies into 5D energies through the creative channels. Okay, this is light going on the offensive through ruthless positivity, right? Draw your swords of light, share your positive affirmations, your light language, your beauty, your love and your healing vibes. Don't hold back. This is the time to do this. And by the way, this painting, Blessed is the Jaguar, I have put it on my website. It is for one special person if you're feeling the call. It's 11 by 14 inches, so it's not real big. It'll fit on your wall. It does not need to be framed. See, it's painted on the sides as well. And I am including a, a shamanic session to help you integrate that power of the Jaguar within you uh, to create sacred change in your life. There will be a link to that below. Um, there's also... Prints available this piece only for the month of May. 
All right, so I'm going to pull at the end. Um, they talked about angels, and I'm going to pull an angel card. This is from Melanie Beckler's Ascension Angels deck. And while I shuffle here, I want to invite you to a, an event that I have coming up in May here. And um, this is my Three Secrets of Spirit and Wisdom Masterclass. It's a free masterclass. We're going to be having um, a guided meditation to connect with a spirit animal. I'm going to be sharing a, a three-step process that you can use to work deeper with spirit animals. And because, like I said, connecting with that animal force within us really helps us to connect with that life force energy, right? That vital energy. And the animals can help us to understand and observe ourselves in, in, in incredible ways so that we can see what's going on with ourselves so that we can know what the next step forward is. These are, um, you know, incredible beings with real power to help us forward on our paths. All right. So this workshop, we're going to be... Um, Again, guided meditation, a three-step process, and also a beautiful Q&A section. So whatever questions you have about spirit animals, bring them forward. It'll be fun, interactive, and you can sign up below in the description box. And the card for, <laughs> the card for this month is Breathe and Become Aware. And again, it's all about awareness this month, right? And this shows us um, this beautiful tree, and it's almost like, energy centers or being aware of what's going on within all your energy centers and also being aware of all I'm seeing this as angelic energy around the tree look at the vibrational energy of that it is absolutely beautiful and um, I think you know that that statement breathe and become aware we can really it's time that we started really becoming aware of the incredible high vibrational spiritual beings that we do have all around us. They are here. They're here to support us. We can connect with them. So I encourage you this month in May, breathe, become aware, uh, connect with that light energy, those light beings, and remember you were born to be free.